Hey guys, good morning, good Monday morning, uh, day after Easter, uh, good to see you again, God, uh, it's God's time, I wasn't planning on coming and talking to you right now, um, actually I was upstairs getting ready to pull clothes, um, and God put it on my heart to, uh, pray, I got on my knees and I prayed and he put it on my heart to come to you now, each and every one of you. Um, I felt for a long time, but here lately I felt that um, to win souls. And I always had my heart to win souls. And for you know, each of us to give our heart to the Lord. But here um, today, it's been very strong that we, as a country, and you've heard me say it before, but I can't uh, express it enough. I can't. Um, given any other way than to say that this virus is going to be here until we truly, each one of us, myself at the front of the line, until we um, come to God and apologize. He has blessed this country so much. He's blessed you. I mean, whether you're making a minimum wage job, whether you're living from payday to payday, whether you have a hundred thousand dollars a year, you're blessed. I mean, think about it. You've got children, a house, a roof over your head, food. We live in a country where you know some some of us are hungry, you know, at times here and there. But we live in a country where we get to eat. You have a roof over your head. You've got loved ones around you, and um. We're blessed. And until we come and bow down and apologize to God, think about it. What if you gave and you gave and you gave and you gave and it wasn't enough? The people you gave to wanted more and more and more and more. Um, God said that His people, if you just humble yourself, and apologize and come to him thanking him for what he gives you um, we turn our back on God we've turned him into a genie a lot of us in the past and a lot of you still are you're taking God and you're molding him into a God that you want I hear people all the time say well you know God you know if he's such a loving God why is he allowing suffering and if he's such a loving God uh, why is he allowing people to go to hell? And if he's this and if he's that, and my God wouldn't do this, and you know, God wouldn't do You're taking God and you're molding him into a God of your choosing and, and, and what you think he should be like. We don't comprehend how great God is. He created you, he created this whole universe, he created everything, and he can do whatever he wants. And he chose to bless you and to bless this country. You were born in the United States. You were born in a country that's free. You know, you were born, whatever parents, you know, you were born with, you know, that was God's choosing. So whether you've had a, uh, a, a good childhood, whether you've had a good upbringing, but God gave you those parents for a purpose, for a reason. Uh, you're blessed. Each and every one of us is blessed. And sometimes we take it, maybe a lot of times, we take that blessing for granted. We, uh, we don't stop and, and, and really get on our knees and from our heart thank God for what he's given us. You've got a great husband, a great wife, children, grandchildren, a job, a house. Um, God has blessed you. And sometimes we forget that. Sometimes we only come to him when, when we want something, and we blame him when things don't go the way we want. God said, if my people who are called by my name, that's Christians, Christ ones, will humble himself. I mean, humble. You know, put yourself on the back burner and put God first. If you do that, and then you pray, and, and then you get on your knees, and you humble yourself and pray, 
and ask for forgiveness. We're all guilty of it, all of us. In the Bible, when he gives, and you've heard this before, but when he gives much, you know, much is required. And he's blessed this country so much. And I believe in my whole heart, this virus is, is God's allowed it for a purpose. And if we just get on our knees and ask him to forgive us and thank him so much for what he's given us and don't expect so much, but just be so thankful with the small things he does give you. See, that's being humble. There's people in other countries where they cannot worship God um, freely. They were either tortured, in prison, or even killed. And they still, behind closed doors, can't wait to worship God. Would love to have a Bible. And they have God in their heart. And, and, and what they do get, the little tiny things they do get, they're so, so blessed. And I've been in so many different countries. And the United States, we take it for granted. Some of our Bibles are so dusty, they don't, they don't ever get opened. The point is that I think the virus is here for a purpose. And I think that you know if we would just thank God for what he's given us, acknowledge who he really is, quit expecting so much, and just be so happy with the small things he gives us, I think he's going to bless this country. And he's going to get it back to where it should be. Um, I've often told people why I think that the United States is still here because we support and back Israel. Um, I'm afraid what would happen if we would not do that because we've gotten, we've become a country, I believe, worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. And if you don't know what that is, read that in the Bible. But, you know, when we kill babies daily and um, we allow what he says an abomination, when we allow the homosexuality, and we allow things to go on in this in this world in, in our lives when he he says it's wrong and some of us may lie on a daily basis or, or cheat or whatever the point is that we're not the country that he has blessed us uh, in the beginning to become so the virus is going to be here until he takes it away um, Take advantage of it. Spend time with your wife. Spend time with you with your children. Really cherish what God's given you. Think about it. Maybe He's done this to brought you, to bring you back home. That way you don't focus so much on your job. You don't focus so much, you know, on other things that don't matter. You see, most people don't realize what they got until it's either gone or until they're getting ready to go. I've heard many people on their deathbed, and they made so much confessions like, if I could do it again, if I could do it again, if I could do it again. Why don't you pretend like today is your last day? Why don't you just say to yourself, today, I, I'm not going to make it tomorrow. Today's my last day. Now, what should I do? Do You see, there's more people coming to God today because of the virus. But he's bringing you back to where you should be at home, with your family, with your loved ones. Thinking right hard about what you've got or maybe what you don't have look at all the people hoarding now it's hard to get some things in the stores that was it was easy before you see he loves you so much he don't ask nothing in return except for maybe your love he brought it on my heart today to bring it to you again I do what he calls me to do please do the same thing when this is over with Get a few minutes and just really look up and really think about the things that you've got and what you're so blessed with. You may not have all the things you want, but I guarantee you, you have all the things you need and, and more, right? Think about that. I love you, but I don't love you as much as he does. Thank him today, would you? God bless. We'll see you again. Um, hit me up. Ask me any question you, you, you got on, on your heart, but uh, say hello to me. It's good to see you all. God bless you. You take care and have a blessed day, okay? Bye-bye.